Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jordan and today I'm here to give you a book review of With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Uh, you guys have probably checked out my reading vlog where I took you guys on a journey of my reactions while I was reading this and oh my gosh, I promise I didn't even plan that. It's so funny because I read it during Mother's Day weekend. Um, it just so happened that I happened to be going home visiting my mom and my family and i hope you guys enjoy that i love the feedback on that and it was so funny because this book follows a young mother who is also caribbean and i got to show you guys like my caribbean family dynamics at least a taste of it so i just felt like it was the perfect little balance and transition into that but let's get into the review of this book it basically follows imani who imani and she got pregnant her freshman year of high school and we don't really see that part of the story of, you know, what it was like when she got pregnant and that whole tough decision. She touches on that, but we're fast forwarded. Now the baby is here. It is her senior year in high school. She has a lot of choices to make. She has a strong passion and love for cooking and bringing that energy. That's how she shows her friends she loves them. That's how she connects with her Wella with even her distant father and we're kind of following her journey of she has some real decisions to make high school senior year this is kind of where whether you love it or not this is where you decide what you're doing post school like post your k through 12 experience like are you going to be going to college are you going to be going to a trade school are you going to go immediately into the workforce but this is a little bit of a different layer to it because she is a teen mother so she is not just thinking about her future she's thinking of the future of her child and what her decisions now will um how they will impact her child so crazy enough like her school somehow in her senior year is offering this culinary course that sounds amazing it sounds like a dream of hers but she already has decided like you know she's going to be taking another study hall like um, course because that will help her get a lot of her, I guess, work done because she also has to work after school. She has a daughter to raise. She has other responsibilities that other teens may not have to face. Granted, I mean, a lot of teens, a lot of teens I knew worked throughout high school and, you know, I was one of them. I worked since before it was legal for me to be working. I was working and, you know, to supplement a lot of families especially if you're from a lower income level family probably do have jobs to help support generic cost or whatever the case may be but how much more would it be if you have a child to take care of like that's just another layer of responsibility but within this we also get introduced to her community that comes and kind of rallies behind her in that support system and how important it is, whether it be from her best friend, Angelica, who's an amazing best friend. I think they're amazing friends to each other or whether it be to Abuela who has raised her. Julio, who is a distant father who is in Puerto Rico, does not live with her. And to her, guide, not guidance counselors, but her, like her teachers, those people within the school that are helping shape her. And I love that the book touched on so many um, layers of Caribbean life or Afro-Latinx, um, her experience of being Puerto Rican, her experience of being black, her experience of being a teen mother, her experience of co-parenting, of having a regular teen life kind of um, decisions to make. It touched on so many different layers in this one beautiful, authentic book. Elizabeth Acevedo does an amazing job where I really trust her writing like this solidified me trusting her writing even more so because with the Poe X, you guys know I love that book. Um, with the Mani story, it's completely different. But the one thing that holds true is the authenticity within the writer, within Elizabeth, the way she writes the characters. This feels like an intimate entryway into Amani's life. Like none of this feels forced. The way the writing is, it's effortless. It is very authentic, very beautiful. It doesn't seem to focus on who the audience is. It focuses on the character and portraying that truth to the audience. And the audience's job is to then 
receive that, which I feel is the best way to tell a story to make the story beautiful and believable and authentic. Once again, I use that word, but that's really what I think of. When I think of With the Fire on High, I think of authenticity. What I love with Elizabeth Acevedo, she has Spanish words that are included throughout this and none of the stuff is necessarily translated for you. Like she doesn't go in feeling like she has to spell everything out for the reader. She feels like if she conveys the truth of the character, you will be engaged enough where if there's something that you don't know, you will put that extra effort to learn about um, that culture. And I think that's the perfect way and it takes the responsibility off of the minority, off of the other, essentially when you're not other, to have to explain everything to everybody. Like I feel that that's the way society should just work in general. But in writing, I think it's even more beautiful because if there is a word or something that you don't know, one, you can put the pieces and the puzzles together around it, but two, it makes you want to research and learn more about that culture as well. So within this book, we also have a good balance of a little romance, a little teen romance. And what does romance look like post having a child as a teen? and what that could look like and also romance uh, amongst her friends and seeing that relationship flourish angelica her, her best friend is also in a serious relationship with another girl and they those two angelica and imani supported each other because angelica supported imani when she became a teen mother when a lot of people kind of wanted to cast her away like there's a chapter that she calls that girl and it's basically like i'm that daughter that or that i'm that girl that your parents warned you about who's pregnant and freshman year and doesn't want you hanging out with me and all this other stuff and angelica stood by her side and likewise imani stood by angelica's side when angelica came out as far as her being um lesbian so i feel that that relationship was cool to see on how those two supported each other and how Teens can see how they can support one another and support those people that they care about and don't have to succumb to like peer pressure of trying to fit in and, you know, abandoning, abandoning those that you care about. It goes against a lot of the stereotypes of what you would think of a young black um, Latina teen mother because it's just being authentic and true. Amani, she has goals, she has ambitions, she has a strong support system, she has a good head on her shoulders, she has dreams, she has aspirations, she has strength, she has pride in her culture. Like the way mother's parent is just scrutinized, but how much more so when you are a teen mother. And kind of how a father doing basically almost like the bare minimum is applauded and there's not that much scrutiny where it seems like the burden of all these different decisions rely on Imani and what does that look like and what could it look like if you know the responsibilities could be more playing field more leveled um so it touched on that um it touches on what it's like to kind of like have these different experiences and see a different possibility of your life how important it is in schools to show diverse career paths not just one angular career path that there's many different ways where you can achieve a successful career and what that exposure that impact can have on um different kids so my final thoughts on with the fire on high is that I feel that this was a beautiful story. You know, so many people want me to compare it to the Poet X and ask, which one's better? Is it as good? All, all, all. It's completely different. Um, the Poet X is a book told in verse. This book is not told in verse, still lyrically beautiful. Um, and what I will say that is very similar. Again, I keep saying authenticity. It is very like the character feels real and feels authentic. I would say even more so than in The Poet X where you really get to dive into Imani's day-to-day -day life and the people who support her around her. And for me, that's one of the most important things when reading is how much do I connect and believe in this character. So I, I love this and I, I highly recommend it. It was one of my favorite reads thus far this year. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Love and light and bye. <laughs>